What I talked about was um, the use of genetically engineered mouse models to try to understand the, the origins of glioblastoma <clears throat> and to study the biological properties that are unique to this very um, uh, fulminant tumor that is essentially untreatable. Um, so uh, we've tried to gen molecularly genetically recapitulate the core mutations that cause these tumors in mice so that we get mice that spontaneously develop them and of course in the mouse then you can start studying the very earliest phases of what goes wrong and where it goes wrong and that's led us to the model that in fact glioblastoma is a stem cell disease and that in fact um, most other cells in the brain are incapable of giving rise to glioblastoma. Um, and so with that information, we've then begun to study the transition of normal stem cells to glio glioblastoma stem cells. And so these are two needles in a haystack. Stem cells are a needle in the normal brain haystack, and cancer stem cells are a needle in the glioblastoma haystack. And those are the two things that need to be teased out to study their intrinsic properties and how one becomes the other. So those are the tools um, that, that we use, the mouse models, but with that we've been able now to use modern genomic technology to do single cell isolation and sequencing, and, and that's given us insights into the properties of these cells. But also, it's, it's really led us to um, understanding that um, to therapeutically treat glioblastoma, treating the highly dividing cancer cells, which is where most therapeutics focus and where most uh, classic chemotherapeutic agents focus, is actually only part of the problem because there's a quiescent stem cell in the tumor that is not targeted by these therapies because they weren't designed for that. These therapies were designed to kill dividing cells. And so based on that, we've now begun a program to develop it's targeting therapeutics for quiescent cells. And, and I discussed some of our new developments, which are quite exciting. So we are able to um, essentially block the growth of tumors of glioblastomas transplanted into mice. And so we have drugs that don't make the mice sick because they don't target dividing cells by virtue of their cell division properties. They actually, actually target cancer cells by virtue of unique properties of cancer cells that are not present in normal cells. So uh, in, in the sort of early phases of what, I, what I've discussed, you know, in mice, the, the major sort of uh, canary in the coal mine, if you will, is if, if mice are ill, they go off their food and so they lose weight. And we've, we've um, been able to successfully impede the development of glioblastomas in mice um, in, in regimens of one month of daily treatment with, with these novel therapeutics. And the mice don't lose weight, but the tumors don't thrive. So um, we're excited about that. And, and really, it, it brings out new principles about how to think about targeting cancer stem cells, therefore, um, identifying the true enemy, um, if you will. So it turns out that if you only target the proliferating component, you're going to have this quiescent stem cell that is going to give rise to a new proliferating component, and on and on and on. So you really have to target both. And the first step to being able to target the quiescent cell is acknowledging its existence and identifying its properties, and that's what we're doing. Well, we have, we, have, we have to continue studying these cancer stem cells and better understanding them and un understanding the details of how normal stem cells transition to cancer stem cells. This is a whole new area of research. And we like to think that we're participants in the vanguard. And so we hope to continue <laughs> to do so. And at the same time, to try to, to continue to develop and understand how uh, the compounds that we've identified kill cancer cells specifically. Keep an open mind. Uh, most classical compounds are mutagenic, classical chemotherapies. They're 
a major, if not the sole source of, of resistance. You're, gi you're giving a tumor really harsh mutagens to kill it. And that's fine and well, but the, the, one, the cells that survive have acquired all sorts of new mutations and permitted a selection for resistance. So, so um, it's important to, to keep an eye open for improved strategies. Thank <laughs> you.